Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up the PC Panel Pro and the PC Panel Mini. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the Pro. Next, we'll use the included Type-C USB cable to connect the PC Panel to our computer. Before we get started on the setup, if you want to save the video and come back to it later, we'll have timestamps linked below. Okay, now that we're on the home page, we'll make our way over to the download page, and if you have the PC Panel RGB, Mini, or Pro, you can download the software here using the button on the left. So after you download the software, you'll navigate to your Downloads folder in Windows and just launch the PC Panel Installer program. When you launch the installer, you may encounter this message here. If that pops up, just click on More Info and click on Run Anyway. So next, you'll want to click I Accept the Agreement and then click Next. And then you may want to set a desktop shortcut, it's checked on by default, so if you just leave that and click on Next again, and then you just click Install. If you already have a previous version of the PC Panel software installed, you'll encounter this page here. It'll ask you to automatically close the application, so you can just click Next, and it'll handle the installation for you. This may take a moment, just let it do its thing, and it should be done within a minute or so. After you complete that step, we'll have it automatically check to launch the PC Panel software, so if you just click Finish, it'll pop up on its own. So as you can see here, the PC Panel Pro has five knobs and four sliders, and these knobs can also act as buttons. Okay, and the PC Panel software also supports having multiple devices connected, so if we connect our PC Panel Mini, and when you plug it in, this menu will pop up like so, and you can adjust the PC Panel Mini settings the same as the PC Panel Pro, except without the sliders, so it has all the same button and dial and lighting settings. Once you have your multiple devices connected, you can toggle between them here, and you can open and close this menu, and you can rename them too by double-clicking on them, and you can call this one Pro, or you can call this one Mini, or you can call them whatever you'd like to call them. So first we'll show off the knobs. Click on the knob you want to configure, and go to the knob tab. Then you see here there'll be app volume, focus volume, and device volume. So if we get started on the app volume, you can see that you can select two different programs, and if you click on the three dots on the side here, you can see the program finder. And if you select what program you want to configure, such as Spotify, It'll now bind to that knob, and when you turn the knob, you can now see Spotify moving up and down. And you don't have to have either the volume mixer or the PC panel software open for this functionality to work. So up next for the knob features, we have the focus volume, which is perfect for gaming, because what it does is it takes your currently focused application and controls that volume automatically using the knob. So say, for example, if you have a game running and you adjust your knob volume, it'll adjust that game's volume. And if you minimize the game and open up another task, it'll adjust that task's volume instead. Okay, so up next we have the device volume option. You can set it to adjust your default device or set a specific device, such as your headphones, your microphone, or even a game console if you plug it in through your audio input. So next we move on to the buttons. The first feature is keystroke. So for any program that doesn't natively support PC panel, what you could do is you could set up a keystroke. For example, you could save Control S as a saving function, or maybe mute your microphone on Discord with a closed bracket, or any other key combination you may want to do to control another application. So up next we have the shortcuts feature. You could set a shortcut to launch when you press the button by searching for the program through the program finder, or you could just paste in a directory if you have the location. And then you just press the button and your program will open right up. Okay, so for the next feature, we have music control. Just like any other Windows media controller, you can play and pause, you can stop, you can go back to the previous track, go over to the next track, or even mute the audio. Okay, so for the next feature, we have end program. You can set a button to automatically end a specific program or even end your focused program. This is really helpful if you're stuck in a game that has crashed and you can't get to your task manager. So up next, we have our sound device features. You can click a button to automatically switch to one of your sound devices, or you can even set up a toggle that can toggle devices option. You can drag sound devices into the selected devices box and press your button to cycle between them. Okay, so next we have the mute application feature. You can select your application using the application finder and select one such as Spotify. Then if you can set it to toggle mute and unmute, you can select it to just mute or select it to just unmute. If you click OK and you press your button, you can see in the volume mixer it is reacting. Okay, next we have the Mute Devices feature. Just like the Mute Application feature, you get to select the device you would like to mute, and at the press of a button you can control whether you want to toggle the mute and unmute, just mute it, or just unmute it. So next we have the Profiles feature. We'll get into this at a later part of the video. Okay, so now we move on to the Settings window. So first you'll see Logarithmic Scaling is disabled, and our Minimum Trim and our Maximum Trim are at 0 and 100. This means as you move the knob, it'll move 1 to 1 relative to the knob movement on your Windows Volume Mixing. So now if we enable logarithmic scaling, you'll see it gives us finer control at the low end for Spotify. And for the trim feature, say for example you wanted to have your minimum volume go down to 20 and your maximum go up to 80, you can set that here and click OK, but now when you move your knob it'll be constrained between 20% and 80%. And for setting up the sliders, you can set them up the same way you set up your knobs, just without the button presses. Okay, so now we move on to lighting. So if you click on the lighting button on the bottom right, you can see in the beginning we have four full body options for a solid color, a rainbow, a wave, or a breath pattern. 
So let's start off with the color feature. You can select any color at all from the wheel over here, and keep in mind as you go close to the black it'll turn off the light. So next we have the rainbow function. You can adjust the phase shift, the brightness, and even the speed of the rainbow, and you can reverse its direction by toggling the reverse direction checkbox. Okay, so now we have the wave function. You can adjust the color, the brightness, and the speed, and you can toggle if it reverses the direction or if it bounces. And lastly we have breath. You can adjust the hue, the brightness, and the speed. Okay, so other than the full body light animations, if you want more individual control, you can select each individual knob or slider. So we'll start with knob 1 over here. There's static and volume gradient options. For the volume gradient option, you can have the knob change its color depending on what the volume is set to. So if I put 100 on red, and if I put 0 down to green, as you can see here, as I turn the knob, it'll cycle between green and red. Now if I want to apply this effect to all of the knobs, I just click apply to all knobs in the bottom corner, and as you can see, they all have a similar reaction as I adjust them. Okay, and then there's the static lighting option. That we've explained in the past, you just select a static light, and you can go to each individual knob and select what the static light's going to be. So you can have one be one color and one be another color. For the sliders, it's basically the same thing. You can select the static color for each slider individually, you can select the static gradient, or the volume gradient, and then you can click apply to all to apply the effect to all of the sliders. Okay, so for the static gradient, you can have it go between the top color and the bottom color statically on all the sliders, so it won't react to the volume, it'll just be a straight effect for all of them. The volume gradient is similar to the static gradient, except now as you move the slider up and down, the light will react to the volume of the slider. Now for the slider labels, you can set them to different static colors. So if you look, I can set slider 1 to green, slider 2 to red, slider 3 to blue, and slider 4 to purple, and each one has their own color. Or you can make them the same color by clicking apply to all, same as the other settings. So lastly, we have the logo color. You can set it to a static color, you can still do the rainbow pattern, or even the breath pattern. Okay, and when you're done configuring your lights, make sure you click OK to save your changes. Now that we've finished configuring our PC panel, it's automatically saved our first profile here, so we can rename it by right-clicking and doing rename, and we can just call it something like main or anything else you may want to name it. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's say we want a new profile for streaming. So you can click on the plus sign down here to create a new profile, and you can rename it to streaming. Okay, so now that this is a completely brand new profile, it doesn't have any of your configurations in the previous profile, and you can alternate between the two profiles by selecting the drop down here, and you can go back to main or you can go back to streaming. Or we can even set up a button to automatically cycle between the two, which we'll walk you through that now. Okay, so for this part, we'll start at the K5 button. Then from there, you go down to the Profile menu, and then you can select the profile you'd like to switch to. So in my case, I'd want to switch back to Main. So if I click OK, then if I go over to the PC panel and press button K5, I am now in the Main profile. Okay, so now that I'm back onto the Main profile, I want to configure the K5 here to go back to the Streaming profile. So if I follow the same steps as before, but select Streaming, then if I come over here and press the button, it is back to the streaming profile. Now we're going to move into voice meter integration. So you can control your voice meter program using PC Panel. We support the standard banana and potato versions of voice meter, but today we're going to go over to standard edition. First, you want to make sure voice meter is running. It has to be running for this to work. Then you want to go into the PC Panel software and click on the gear icon on the top left, and then go to the voice meter tab and click on voice meter enable, and then click OK to save your settings. Now that we have that set up, we can go into one of the knobs and we can see there's a new voice meter tab where we can configure our integration settings between PC Panel and voice meter. Okay, so we're going to configure knob 1 to control the second output slider in voice meter. So to do that, you select input slash output and set it to output, and then set the index to 2. And then now when you click OK and save it, the knob will adjust the second output. Okay, so now if we want to set up one of the buttons, we can have it do something such as mute one of the inputs. So if you select input, and then select which ones you want to mute, we'll start with input 2, and then select the button to mute. Now if you click OK, and then you press that button, it'll mute input 2. Now we're going to set up OBS integration. So you click on the gear on the top left, and then you have to download this plugin here from this GitHub link. If you just click on it, it'll start the download from Chrome. This plugin will allow the PC panel software to connect into OBS. Okay, we've just finished installing the WebSocket plugin for OBS. Now we have to enable OBS in PC Panel software. So click on the gear in the top left and then click on OBS Enable. Okay, so after you enable OBS, you'll see the address, the port, and the password. You can leave these as they are by default. Click OK. Okay, now that we've set up OBS, you can click on one of the knobs and we'll begin our configuration. So go to the OBS tab. Okay, so now we'll use the button to select our scene. So if we click on the scenes drop down, we'll see we have scene 2, we have PC panel. This is reading all the scenes you currently have in OBS. For us, in our demo, we're going to set up scene 2. And what I can do now is when I click OK, and if I press the button, it'll bring me to scene 2 of my OBS configuration. 
Now we go over the knob. So if we go to knob and go to OBS, now we can set up source volumes. So for this, I want to set up my desktop audio. And if I click OK and I start moving my knob one, you'll see on OBS my desktop audio is moving up and down accordingly. Okay, great. Now that your PC panel is fully configured, we can get rid of OBS and we can close the PC panel software. And as you look down in your system tray here, you'll see the PC panel software still lives down there and your programs will still work accordingly. Now that the program is minimized to the task tray, your device will still work as it was configured, and if you click on this program, you can bring it back up and edit your settings, or if you search in your taskbar for PC panel software, you can bring it up like that as well. Every time you restart your computer, the PC panel software will already be running in the background, so you don't have to open it up again unless you want to edit your configuration. This has been the PC panel setup guide, thanks for watching, you can save the video and the timestamps will be down in the description if you want to come back and rewatch it anytime.